Well, we're now joined in the studio by Seth Kaplan. He's a transportation analyst with National Public Radio. So Ethiopia's transport minister says the crew followed the rules but were unable to save the aircraft. They followed the rules. What does that tell you? Well, based at least on, on this preliminary investigation by the Eth Ethiopian authorities, and we'll still have to hear what Boeing, the FAA, and others uh, have to say once they've had a chance to review it, but based on this, this sort of re removes that ambiguity about, well, maybe there were issues with the system, but maybe the pilots also didn't react as strongly as they could have. It seems in this case that whereas in the first crash with Lion Air, uh, the pilots rather clearly didn't know exactly what to do. In this case, the pilots had gotten that education subsequent, it seems, to the Lion Air crash, and it still wasn't enough. So does it seem to you, then, that Boeing doesn't really have a handle on the issue here? They're talking about software updates within a couple of weeks. There are hints that the 737 MAX 8 may be back in the air by the summertime in the Northern Hemisphere. I mean, it, it, does it not strike you that Boeing doesn't really know why this is happening? Well, you know, the good news, if you could call it that, for Boeing is that at least the cause seems to have been... Uh, what a lot of people feared. It wasn't some totally different thing. That would have been even worse if there was some other issue with the plane. I mean, this crash in the end looks rather similar to Lion Air. The new thing that we know here is that even the best efforts of pilots uh, seem to have not been enough. So the fix that Boeing is working on does address this issue, but it just shows how urgent that fix is and that even that further education that everybody getting wasn't enough, that these planes, uh, even with that, perhaps shouldn't have been flying subsequent to, uh, to the Lion Air crash. Yeah, so do you think this is a case of the computers befuddling the crew and in the end being a hindrance rather than a help? And what I'm really asking is, might a, I don't know, a more experienced aviator, someone who's been flying these kind of planes and many other planes for years and years and years, handle situations differently? Well, in this case, you had a, a fairly inexperienced pilot in, in, in the right seat, as it's often called, the, uh, the first officer, the co-pilot, uh, just a couple hundred hours. Now, that's not unusual to have somebody less experienced in most parts of the world in, in, in that seat. A rather experienced captain, though. Uh, yeah, automation has, uh, has its benefits and, and downsides. Overall, though, as, as flight has become more automated, aviation has become safer so it's hard to blame automation per se it, it's when as I think you're suggesting John that it, it, it gets out of hand and you have a system uh, that based on a bad reading from one sensor and that's what should never happen right. uh, brings down an aircraft well that brings me to my next question because the remedy to this situation or the antidote to this situation is available but it's an add-on you have to pay extra it's just like a car when you have a car you can have things added to your car you can customize it and airlines do the same when they get new aircraft but it costs more how bad is that for Boeing well, yeah, the idea that something mission critical, something safety sensitive yeah. should be an option is, is something that, that's causing a lot of concern. Now, it's difficult to say, uh, so on one hand, you know, th there would have been more information had that been there. Difficult to say whether it would have prevented the crash in the sense, this doesn't excuse the rest of it, but in the mm -hmm. sense that with these two crashes, the pilots kind of knew what was wrong, right? They knew that they were, they were getting bad readings, and that indicator, which will now become standard, would have told them that. So in this particular case, it seems they did know that. The problem was that they just couldn't do anything about it, but you want to see something like that absolutely be standard and not an option. Yeah, now this is hurting Boeing's business very badly because the 737 is key to its profits. They make other aircraft, but they make real money on the 737. So two one-word answers. Will this eventually get solved and blow over? Yes. Uh, it will? Yes. And do you think there might be criminal charges coming down the pike at some point? Ooh, I don't know. And, and, uh, and even with my first answer, just saying yes, if you ask me to push one way or the other, you know, you, you'd think so because there's so much incentive to get it right. Uh, when we know there is an investigation, we'll see. Clearly, many things went wrong. Uh, there's no question about that. The question is whether, uh, you know, something very inappropriate happened or whether it was just the regulators, whether because they were under-resourced or otherwise just not doing their jobs properly. All right. Seth, very good to see you. Sad Likewise. story, of course, but very good for you. And uh, if you had to have your analysis, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's Seth Kaplan, National Public Radio here in the U.S.